So has anybody got a, a little snippet of music they'd be happy to have a go at playing for us? And perhaps you could explain to us what, what, what notes you used and, and maybe the, perhaps a, f a phrase that you've come up with. And as I say, it doesn't have to be a harp. If you haven't got a harp, you can use voice, harp, guitar, whatever you've got. Anybody want to, feeling brave enough to come up with something? I, I've got a little tune. I'll, Thank you, I'll, Kate. You didn't, so I did Corwin because obviously you did, Kate. Of course, <laughs> of course. Here, and I'll make him listen to this. So I've only got the tune, um, but I started off. So it was C, A, it's not, not quite in tune because I've been tinkering. C, A, D, B, E, G. So it's C, A, G, B. And tinkering around. Um, and then I've just I decided to show up in the F sharp because he would like that so it's come out <laughs> fantastic that's my a part but yeah Lovely. Anyway. so the f sharp is in there because because it's a little homage to corwin's um preferences so it's something like this isn't it i, I really yeah. love that little sequence it's gorgeous isn't it really nice yeah, it's, all, it's about tweaking the rhythm isn't it because just yes. playing one that it's about putting the rhythm in yes sort of, absolutely the notes and finding the, the pattern that they want to settle in it is exactly that, and it's it's rhythm. I mean, you've done some great advanced stuff there because you've done patterns and you've you've developed it, and and you know little patterns that you return to. It's fantastic. Thank you. I love that. I've never done I've never done something just that simple, actually. Yeah. Just well, like take some letters. <laughs> do, do you know honestly that the reason I did it is just it is such a simple idea, and it's it's got a long, long, long history. So those of you who know um, <laughs> organ music, for example. Um, because I, I started as an organist before I lapsed and became a harpist, which is much more interesting. Um, but Bach, uh, J.S. Bach, his name, if you translate that in the German um, notation, it's B-flat, A, C-H. So there's lots and lots and lots, and some of you might be nodding, lots of you might know of the pieces. Um, Liszt wrote some, so a lot of people wrote using that, they wrote fugues and other pieces using that sort of idea and again it's just a little tiny germ of an idea it can just be liberating um i i don't know if you, any of you have ever been to america but i i because I, I went to school there for a little bit and i went there on holiday and i went to i needed some salad dressing and i went to the local supermarket there and there were two there was a whole two aisles of salad dressing and just so much i didn't know what to choose and that's the thing is, is if you have so much choice, it's really, really difficult. But if you have just a few notes, or if somebody says, hey, write a haiku about a tree, but don't use the letter E, you know, that sort of limitation is much, much better than just saying, oh, write about, a, write about anything you want. And it's just paralyzing if you do that. You can't, you know, it's, so it's really great having those little limitations. And then what you've done with that, Kate, with Corwin's name is to then develop them. It's fantastic. So. Hang on to that tune, and we'll we'll do some more with it in a little while. <laughs> Does anybody I'll, else? I'll want... put it on the next album. Excellent, fantastic, thank you. I've got one. I've got one. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Well, so... mine is. So it's obviously like my name is seven letters, so I had to shorten it a of bit. Of course. Yeah. But it went like. And then it has a B part, which I'm going to spare you. <laughs> oh, uh, but well, I really we, loved it. <laughs> we can work on a B part. That's fantastic. Thank you. Have you ever done anything like that before? Uh, I've been, not, not, not like this sort of really structured mm. theme, but I've been doing 
some uh, folk dances, sort of like improvised folk dances. Right. Yeah. Like my favorite is mazurka, so I do a lot of that. Ah, like, right. Okay. But yeah. this system is like brilliant for getting like the little nudge you need. It's and exactly then... that. It's just a yeah. little thing you think I can do that. You know, it's so easy. I can. Do... So that's brilliant. I mean, I don't. Thank you for that. You totally oh, got okay. me out of my stealth mode. <laughs> that is a. That is a. Oh, brilliant. That's even better. Um, <laughs> if you want to, by the way, just for those of you who do, but I'll make sure the address is somewhere else. If I can do this without messing up my system, I'm not sure if I can or not. My. Um, yeah, yeah, that's my website there, where you'll see, um, if you go to markharmer.uk, um, you'll go to the shop and there's a little thing that says freebies, and down there is a link to that, which is the online generator, so you can just generate your own if you want to. So markharmer.uk shop and freebies, and then there's a link to that, and there's some manuscript paper you can print off if you want to do it the old-fashioned way. That's <laughs> okay. so very cool, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an absolute pleasure, so if I can get rid of that now. Oh. I could, I could. Please, please, Angela. Is it, is it Angela or Angela? Angela, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so it what... was um, the name of my sister, and her name is, it's a very rare name. Her name is Aglaya, but that would be A-G-E-A-B-A, -A -A, and that would, in the first place, be... Right. But then I made something a little bit different. I thought this... G, I would like it to have it as a G sharp. And then the rhythm will, would be. And then it goes of itself. And then I, I, I did not do it just now. I have, you, you have showed us, I have heard that before and I made this tune. But I, what I thought was maybe if you get this start, then you, as you said, you have something to build on, but then you can fix it a little bit if you think it it could be nicer if you can make a sharp or a flat or something like that. Exactly, or try different structures. You know, you've, you've all of all of I know all of you have sort of do all sorts of Breton dances and all sorts of things. They have interesting structures, different bar lengths and so forth. And 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 you know, you can you can you can just choose something that's inspired by your own folk music culture as well, you know, and just make it sort of something that's a little bit national. So, you know, our, our British folk music is very boring. It's very four square. We sort of do something and then we all stop and have a cup of tea and then carry on. And I wish I wish our music was a bit more interesting sometimes like that. So I, I tend to borrow from all sorts of cultures. <laughs> but but I think it gets interesting when we when we, we suddenly have a theme we have to yeah. follow. And then the other thing is it is nice to give it if you have it as you make yeah. it for these babies. but. I have done, for example, for my grandchildren, yeah. and then it is a tune that is just the name of the person. That is a very personal gift, yeah. anyway. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. Um, when I did the um, hospital project, I had a little, like the little QR codes. You sometimes see the digital codes. So I had posters on the wall, so people could go up with their phone and go to the website and have a listen to some of the tunes I'd written the previous week, um, which is really, really nice because then they could you know because not everybody knows what a harp sounds like and so i wouldn't go up to people I, I would just play it in the corner and then say would you like me to you know play that tune for your child and i just make one up on the spot and some people wouldn't even realize it was you know anything special but it's it's lovely so i i, I must have written i suppose at least 200 of them over the time of the project and it's just really really easy to write that amount of music it's 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 great it's just the less you start with the better would anybody else like to have a go at um, playing something? I'm not sure if I can see everyone or not. I can see 12, 14 people, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, 12 people. So I don't know if that's everyone. Oh, no, there are more. Oh, there are more hiding in another window. That's scary, isn't it? I didn't realize there were that many people. <laughs> Mark, uh, I did one when you, when you gave your first workshop. Okay. So I've been on this for a couple months. <laughs> Fantastic. Would you like to play it, Sue? Or, or sure. not? Uh, yeah. Great. Excellent. And apologies to all the people who are on my second window. I didn't even realize there were more people in there. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the first is all the letters of my name, Sue Richards. And then 
I decided to add my my husband Bill. So B I L L. Um, and it was like, and I just made up the rest of it. That's fantastic. Thank you. So you've kept it. So I see you've written, you've written it all out beautifully as well. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I loved doing that. I thought it was a really fun workshop when you did it before. Thank you. Thank you. And I love the, again, the way you've separated it out and you've, you've put little rests in and things like that between phrases. It's, it's really, really nice that. Um, right. Yeah. Have you tried, because um, it's something we're going to do in a minute, have you, you didn't try doing a left hand to it at all, did you, at this stage? I have, yeah. Um, because it's something else we'll have a go at in a minute, but I'll, I'll ask somebody else to play their tune as well after this. So that's that's one of what, what I love about that is again it's something we'll come to is is the simplicity of it. So if you can um, if you can you know essentially keep one harmony going. That's you know it's amazing what you can do with just one harmony or two harmonies, just like you can do with one or two notes letters of a name. But that's beautiful. Thank you, Sue. That's really lovely. And oh, thanks thank to Bill you. as well. <laughs> Would anybody else like to to have on it? And perhaps perhaps you can unmute yourself if you do, because I don't think I can see everybody here. I'll see if I can change my settings. No, I'm not sure. I, I, I would like to hear what my name sister has come up with, because I find that Maria is a peculiar little tune. Ah. Uh, actually, I got stuck very quickly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you? <laughs> That's a first very good in a workshop as well. Uh, well, I couldn't. Quite decides, but I thought the first like so it goes F A D, which I thought was quite positive. And so I thought that's me. F A D B A. Uh, then yeah. I, then it would be B B A. So I think a rhythm there could be, but I don't know. And I tried with some sharps and at least, but uh, it, this was. On the other hand, if you go. So, yeah. You still have the B A. The, uh, the A is okay, but the B comes in a bit, a little, a little bit funny there. So yes. Like, yeah. like the, so, so, what did I start? So, so, so that, so for me, I mean, I respond very well to you know harmony is my thing. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, so, I, so if, if that were me, you, you've got two choices, haven't you? You could either do the B flat. Yeah. Uh, or a... Something like that, so it should suggest a different harmony. Uh, that's true, yeah, but that actually sounds very nice. Mm. So that's a sort of quite interesting modal harmony you could try using. So, so that, that's what you did? Yeah. Something, something like funny. that, you know. Because this, uh, the moment you put on the on the uh, ac chords, uh, it sounds absolutely different. It sounds sounds different, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's and I have to say, in in the best program of one of the tradition of one of the programs we used to have in um, in the UK at Blue Peter, they always used to say, "Here's one I prepared earlier." And in fact, that was uh, I did a piece that I had that exact problem with. And yeah. I couldn't really make much of use of it until I used those harmonies. So I used a B minor, uh, sorry, D minor and G major. So okay, that's, that's cool. So, so that's actually the way to save it. 
Uh, Same, minor, exactly, whatever, exactly. Whatever. So what do you, D, ma D minor and B major. And, and G major, yes. G. Uh, so the, yes, so D minor and G major. Okay, yes. And you've got some nice choices then. Uh, the other thing you could do, which is sort of more what Sue did, I think, which is to just keep, keep to one thing. So you just keep on one on one yeah. bass note. That's another way of doing it. Actually, um, I like the drones. Mm, the drone, yes, exactly. Which, of course, you know, so you can pretend you're a bagpiper. When it comes to developing things, um, so I talked about starting, and I said I was also going to talk about developing and finishing tunes. Uh, so to developing them is is all about some of the fantastic things we've already helped from heard from Sue and and, and others, um, which is to to just just you know, just write a free form second part of the tune that's inspired by the first. Also play with the rhythms and play with the sharps and the flats and play with the harmony. So you could, for example, um, is that right? That's Marie, isn't it? Um, a, yeah. Um, so, so you could just keep a si single harmony, say a fifth or something like that. Um, and, you know, you could do something with that. Or you could do what I did, which is just choose a different. Um, so a different harmony. Um, and you can write a second half of the tune. Maybe I know what Sue did was she, she used her husband's name, but you can also just, just write a second half of the tune however you want. I just think, you know, just having a little, a few choices makes it so, so much easier. So if you're going to write a B music, a second part to the music, you can either make it like the first part or you can make it completely contrasting. You know, you've got so many sort of options in that way, but, but try and limit them to either like it or contrasting with. Um, and uh, there are other things you can do for variety. Um, you can also think about things like sequences. Um, so one of the things I do when I'm teaching my students is I try and teach them to look under the hood of the music, to look at how is the music structured, sort of how many different bits of composition are there um, throughout this piece. Um, and, and actually you can look at most pieces and the, some of the best pieces are pieces that reuse, um, reuse different, you know, the same, the same elements um, several times. And so I think in some ways the, the less you use, the more you get out of it. So definitely less is more in that case. Um, <clears throat> so you can think of sequences. So if, if we're going to do this, um, um, we, could, we could then, we could go, we could then, oh, <laughs> that won't work, will it? So we could we could maybe just do a little bit of a variety and, and extend it. Once you have the, a few notes, you can really you can really make it um, sing. Um, so what I'd like to encourage you to do is is maybe maybe have a go at the little piece you've already written, and I'll leave my grid of notes up there so that you can um, you can work out what your letters are, and then. I'd like to encourage you to see if you can come up with a variation or a B part to your music, or if you've already done that, perhaps you can come up with some harmonies and just see what we can do to develop this tune. And we're making these tunes sort of live, which is fantastic. Hi there, how's everyone getting on? Sorry to interrupt you, you'll look like you're happily plinking away there, it's fantastic. It's like a well-oiled harping machine this morning. That's very good. <laughs> so. Has anybody got anything they've they've now done to their tune to <laughs> hopefully make it better and <laughs> not completely wreck it? Has anybody got something? So, uh, uh, is is yes, please. So my name is Arini. So that would be B D E G E. Yeah. So I did this. Uh, sorry. So, um, could you play that again? Uh, 
So you've taken the first few notes and just, just gone with them and developed them into something else? Develop them into, yeah. Yeah. Have you any idea what harmony you might put yet or have not, not got that far yet? Not thought about I, a I harmony? I the first bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so because it, it would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Um, would it, thank you very much indeed. Would, it, would anybody else like to play play anything they've just um, developed or come up with? That's well, the thing up. is, you know, I kind of like thought uh, this could be a gavotte, in fact. Right. So, so how about Angela there? Yes, I could, I could, I have been, now I've been thinking what I have been doing there and I read, read I see that I have used the same phrase in very different way several times. I, I play this for you. And I, I don't have to play the whole second part, but I just could show what you I did. I, in a way, uh, took it the other way around. And then it's from the start again. But I now I understand what I have done there. there That's anyway. fantastic. So you've taken it and sort of almost turned it upside down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Really nice. Really nice. Thank you very much. It's so interesting. Everybody comes up with their own individual things, which of course is 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 so great. Yeah. Would anybody else like to play anything that they've just done? Anybody else? Yes. Uh, so Maria. Uh, hi, Maria. Hi. I have a question for the oh, alpha. Of course. You said something uh, about it um, coming from medieval times. Uh, and is it something that you, is it an alphabet you know was used then, or did you invent it uh, inspired uh, by what they did then? It was the second, really. I invented it yeah. inspired by what they did because they actually used, I think, at vowels and syllables and things like that. So rather than, I mean, I don't know too much about what they did, but I don't think it was strictly letters. It was more like vowels, you know, A and E and things like that. So I yeah. think that's what they did, I, I think. But yeah. you know, maybe it's something that might be worth looking into for anybody who's interested, because who knows? Yeah, might yeah I think more. I would be interested in that. Yeah. I think I many, do. many composers did invent their own musical alphabets, and, and absolutely, and, yeah. And, and yeah. So, and, yeah. Well, you did too, then. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. So I'm part you of the tradition. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, I think of a composer like Carolan, who I'm sure you know a lot of people know. He wrote music for patrons all the time for for people he stayed with. But as far as I know, he didn't use a system. I think he just came out with this stuff. But who knows? I mean, it'd be interesting to know if you know anybody could actually uncover that he might have used a system for doing it because he wrote hundreds and hundreds of tunes. I mean, honestly, if you use this, you you can you can write lots and lots of stuff, and nothing is wrong. So so mm -hmm. it's all great stuff. Yeah. Um, and just some of the things that, that come out of um, what you have done uh, just now, some of the people who very kindly played for us. Um, we've got other things we can do. So we can do, say, a phrase like that. Um, we, we, can, we can turn that upside down as well, can't we? So we can do something like that, or we can come up with sequences like this. You know, that's another way of, of doing it. And just some of the other ideas you could, you could think of to vary the music. You could also alternate registers. So if I just take this simple thing, which I just made up on the top of my head, this little chin. So, so you, could, you could have a section and then another section that starts.
So you can make it, you can give it a very, very different flavour than you could say, you know, if it's up here. Um, So you can think of using the different parts of the harp. And I always think, you know, harps are expensive and we've paid for all these strings, so might as well use them, you know? Um, you can also um, think about dynamics as well. Um, so you could just repeat things in different dynamics. Uh, so you could do something like that. Again, it just gives you a bit of variety. And there's another thing which I wanted to just introduce you to, and if you like doing research, you can maybe go in and have a read on it. It's something called harmonic rhythm. And the harmonic rhythm is sort of a bit, it's, it's about the harmonies, but it's how quickly or regularly the harmonies change. So you can have a harmony that ju just doesn't change at all, uh, like this. That's what we call a drone. Or, or you can have... <laughs> You can have something which changes a lot. Um, uh, there's a piece that I've been doing at the moment um, by, um, oh dear, Lily Neal, that's it. She, she's written a, a, a klezmer piece. Um, and if I can, she, that's got a fantastic sort of harmonic rhythm to it. If I can, I can try and do a tiny bit of it just to show you. It's great fun. Um, <laughs> nice thing about a piece like that is it also uses really unusual scales as well. So that's another thing you could try doing is just tuning your harp to a really strange scale and just play with it. And it needn't be the same scale um, in every octave either. So you could have, um, in fact, I'll just play a tiny bit of English music seeing as that's where I'm from. Um, so that you can play several chords by, say, having, I've got the F sharp here, F natural in the left hand, and then the F sharp in the right hand. So I can go between quite, you know, distant harmonies very, very quickly. And you couldn't really do that with a pedal harp because you'd have to be pedaling, wouldn't you? <laughs> with, with a lever harp, you can set all sorts of strange things. Um, and finally, you could just think about unusual time signatures as well. Say, writing a piece in 3-4 or 4-4 or, or even 5-4 or 6-4. And, you know, the Breton music quite often alternates between 6 and 4 and 8 and all sorts of strange time signatures. So there's no reason why we couldn't do that as well. There's all sorts of stuff we can do to, our, to elaborate our little, um, our little piece of music. Um, and I, I didn't want to risk going on too long, so I'll come to a stop in a second, um, and then maybe if anybody's got any questions or wants to play anything more, we can. Um, but I would just say, in terms of finishing, um, there's, there's a few things I think would be, can, I find really helpful. And one of them was just to have a deadline. So I'll say, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself 24 hours. You know, if I hear, hear something like I did, I once heard Eric play this fantastic piece on one of his Friday night concerts, and I gave myself 24 hours to, to basically learn it by ear and put it on YouTube. And I managed it just about, not quite, but almost. But it was really stimulating to give myself that time limit. Um, it's just another constraint. So constraint of time or range of notes or parts of the harp or whatever, harmonies, whatever. Just think of the different constraints that you can apply to make your piece come alive. Um, I, I would also say you, you can write pieces of music down. I personally, I prefer to grab my phone, which I've lost, of course, but you all know what a phone looks like. Imagine it's there. I use my phone to just record a piece of music. That can be really useful if I have a little idea that I think I might lose. Um, just use a phone to record it. Um, I, I would say if you can finish a piece of music rather than leave it half finished, do finish it and record it. Um, because I I've, personally, I find if I have half finished tunes, I just never do anything with them. Um, I, I sort of have to finish a tune and then, then it is actually worth it. And finally, if you're really brave, you can then put it out there a bit like some of you have been fantastically brave today in putting it out here um, within our group as well. So, so you know, uh, there's all sorts of um, stuff you can do. I have the notes from this session, which um, will, oh, there's my phone. I have the notes from this session, so I'll, I'll see if I can, um, I'll send them to somebody to have it posted up or, or I can post it up on the, uh,
think it's got thumbs up from Maria. <laughs> Great, excellent. Um, and the other thing I'll mention in the notes, because you, you won't have heard me talk about them, but I'll just briefly mention them, is just the idea of a picture as well. You can also use an image to inspire yourself. So, for example, um, there's, there's a piece by um, Sue Rothstein, a um, fantastic composer, um, called Seagull. She did. I don't know whether, whether that's really what seagulls sound like and why she got the inspiration from that. But it's a lovely, it's just lovely sometimes to have a little image. So there's, there's, there's the image of flamenco that uh, was used in Italiana. There's, there's um, my, some of my own arrangements I've used, um, you know, flowers as images and bells just to help me think of, you know, ways of, of writing pieces. So um, my... Um, my sheep eggs she more, which I did, uh, I, I recorded in a, in a wood with lots of bluebell flowers and I just used the idea of the tolling bells, you know, to inspire my accompaniment. And here's an example of an accompaniment that doesn't change key. All I do is change registers every so often. So, yeah, yeah. So that one is She Big She More, that, uh, that piece um, by Carolyn. That's, that's really all, all I wanted to say for today. Just, just give you a chance to try something and just, just, just give you a little idea of something that's a little bit different. So you don't have to use the letters. It's just something I found really has helped me um, just to come up with hundreds of tunes in a hurry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the applause. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mark. That was excellent. Really, really inspiring. Thank you, Maria. That's really kind of you. If I find a minute here, I will compose because it's Father's Day uh, in Sweden and Finland. I will try to start something with my father's name. Oh, nice. 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 Thank you. Well, that's, that's brilliant. Oh, I've, I've, heard some, because... I've heard some amazing pieces here today. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. It was lovely. <laughs> That's an absolute pleasure. That's a pleasure. Nice to see you all. I wish it could all be face to face, but hey, maybe next time. Mm. Maybe next year. That'll yeah, be lovely. it will be over our virus. And... <laughs>